I have a Texas Chainsaw Massacre t-shirt. Are you jealous? Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Luke, as you probably know if you're watching this, uh, if you're familiar with my channel and whatnot. Um, I was thinking about doing this, um, but someone mentioned that they'd like to see it. So I thought, fuck it, why not, you know, let's, let's do it. Um, I'm going to start doing videos on my DVD collection. Um, I'm just going to go through it bit by bit. Um, so this is the first one. Um, I'm just going to try and do one of these every sort of fortnight or so. Um, so that, you know, I can get through it eventually. Um, because there is a fair bit, so it will take me quite a few parts to do it all. Um, but, yeah, um, we'll kick it off in a second. First of all, plug for my podcast. Ironcast, the true alternative podcast, music podcast, not film podcast. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description um, so that you can go there and check that out if you're interested. We cover all sorts of different music, so you know it's really, really not just for one genre. It's it's all sorts of stuff. We we try to do a little bit of everything. So hopefully you'll find something you like there. Anyway, first DVD. This is a double pack by Prism Leisure that comes with Night of the Living Dead, the original 1968 version, and Children of the Living Dead, um, a pseudo sequel that was made in the early 2000s, I think. Um, yeah, this is uh, yeah just like a really cheap bundle. I got this for about 50p, I think. So, you know, I thought two movies for 25p. Obviously, I already had... It's one of those dual disc uh, type arrangements. Um... Annoyingly, though, the um, movies are printed on the side that the, the wrong labelled side. So if I hold that up, see that. So it's children of the that's the children of the living dead side, um, or at least it should be. If you put it in with that into the player with that facing up, it actually plays Night of the Living Dead, which is the wrong way round, um, which is very annoying. But you know, so I'm not going to talk about Night of the Living Dead because I talked about it in my Blu-ray video. Um, and uh, I will get an opportunity somewhere down the line to talk about Night of the Living Dead again. Um, but Children of the Living Dead, um, very confusing plot, very boring movie. Um, something to do with like, you know, like the town that Night of the Living Dead takes place in. Like, you know, all these years later, all these kids die and then, you know, the zombie uprising happens again. And like this local convicted murderer is like the leader of the zombies. It's a very... Um, it manages to be very confusing and very boring at the same time. So yeah, that's a movie I don't like. Children of the Living Dead, to kick things off. Next up, a movie I do like, 28 Days Later. Um, yeah, Danny Boyle's uh, zombie apocalypse movie. Well, technically they're not zombies, actually, because by definition a zombie has to be dead. Um, and uh, if you watch 28 Days Later, the infected are not actually dead. Um... Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, what's the guy's name? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Killian Murphy. He plays a uh, guy who wakes up in a hospital. Um, doesn't know how he got there. Um, yeah, he, he, that, that's right. Yeah, he wakes up in a hospital. Doesn't know how he got there. Goes outside onto the streets of London. London's empty, and he has no idea. He's trying to find out why London is empty. Um, turns out that, yeah, a plague has been released uh, that has uh, basically turned most of the population into flesh-eating ghouls. Um, they run. They're running zombies in this movie, which, uh, you know, I don't mind running zombies. I can I can live with, uh, with uh, a running zombie here and there. Um, this one comes with a booklet. Um, one of those old... You, you used to get these um, in, in a lot of DVDs where they'd have a lot of booklet of, like, upcoming films. Um, so it's quite interesting to see because it's one of those things where there's there's a few titles that you remember and then there's a load that you just like don't you know so it's always interesting to look through these sort of catalogues um, maybe for some recommendations for some hidden gems and stuff I can't honestly say I've found any through looking them but you know I, I live in hope next up the sequel 28 weeks later set you know uh, f you know further down the line um, where society is uh, trying to rebuild after uh, the initial uh, outburst. This one's not as good. It's an okay movie. Um, some good zombie action in it. There are some quite creepy scenes, but overall, 
Um, I definitely think this one is not totally necessary for, for people. So I would definitely recommend people see 28 Days Later. This one, if you like 28 Days Later, check this one out. But it's not a, a must watch by any means. Next up, we have uh, 976 Evil. Uh, this is the directorial debut of Wes Craven, not Wes Craven, um, Robert England. Uh, yeah, Robert England. Uh, so this is something to do with like a, a, a phone number, like, a, like a, a premium rate phone number that you can call up and it's, you know, does these sort of um, like satanic incantations and stuff. Uh, basically, yeah, just, just weird shit happens. Um, so yeah, that's that's nine seven six evil. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not a very good film. It was definitely interesting to watch, um, and there is a there is a decent little bit of gore in it. But overall, I I, I can't honestly recommend it unless you're you're curious about um, you know Robert England as a director. Um, that's mainly why I bought it um, for for that reason. So yeah, that's 976 Evil. Okay, so we're out of numbers now and into letters. This is the ABCs of Death. This is by uh, Monster, I believe. Yeah, Monster Pictures. Um, two discs. Uh, plenty of bonus features. Loads of behind-the-scenes featurettes. Um, deleted scenes. Um, there's a commentary. There's trailers and stuff. The ABCs of Death is quite an interesting one. It's basically... Um, 26 shorts by 26 different directors um, and it's so it sort of takes the idea of the um, sort of uh, portmanteau picture to its uh, sort of logical conclusion I guess um, and uh, yeah part of the problem with that is that you're always going to get a very mixed bag of, um, of movies uh, so they you know there's a couple of them that are very good couple of them that are very bloody very shocking a um, couple of them that are quite disturbing, a couple of them that are quite funny, Come, a lot of them are just plain bad. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the ABCs of death. Definitely an interesting watch, I would say. Um, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say I like it, but it is definitely, if you're a horror fan, this is a movie that, um, is, is, it's, an inter it's a very interesting watch, I've got to say. Um, so yeah, that's the ABCs of Death. I don't have ABCs of Death too. <laughs> a favourite from my youth, Ali G in the House, the movie. Um, yeah, so uh, Ali G, obviously Sacha Baron Cohen's famous comic creation. This is um, obviously a, a film that received terrible reviews, but I actually think is very funny. Um, yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's great. You know. Um, Ali G, uh, by sheer chance, gets elected as a member of parliament, um, uncovers a uh, plot to um, oust the prime minister uh, by the deputy PM, and uh, you know has to kind of you know go on a bit of a quest to get the the, the PM uh, you know back in into uh, office. Um, definitely, I think this is a very funny movie. Um, the famous, you know, camouflage scene, very funny. You know, the raid on uh, Checkers. I, I think it's a very funny movie. Um, full of both. There's um, an audio commentary done in character by um, Ali G and Ricky C, which is very funny. I have listened to that. There's a load of um, uh, outtakes and, uh, you know, drop scenes and stuff. Um, all of that sort, sort of thing, you know, um, trailers and whatnot. Like I say, I actually think this is a very funny movie, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that is uh, Ali G in the house. It's box set time. Alien Quadrilogy. Um, yeah, so this is um, the first four Alien movies. And this is a lovely set, I've got to say. There's nine discs. So you've got Alien, uh, the bonus features for Alien. Um, Aliens, the bonus features for Aliens. Alien 3. Bonus features for Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, bonus features for Alien Resurrection, and general bonus features. Um, just just to talk about you know the packaging very briefly. This is the um, like the wraparound thing that was I, I believe this is like the wraparound thing that was on the the box like when it was in shops. Um, and so it's kind of cool that because I, I got this second hand, so it's kind of cool that that's still in there. Um, it also comes with this booklet. 
that is uh, has got all the details for the movies in there. This is pretty much a, I mean I know they've brought out a Blu-ray set since, um, but this is this is the best way to watch the Alien movies. I mean you've got theatrical and extended cuts of all four movies. And a bundle of bonus features. I mean, you know, commentaries, um, trailers, um, trivia tracks, pretty much everything. So to talk about the movies, I mean, I love the original Alien. The original Alien is one of my favourite movies. Um, so, yeah, uh, the, the Nostromo comes under attack from a hostile creature from, a, from outer space that they know nothing about and is seemingly indestructible. Um... And uh, Lieutenant Ellen Ripley has to lead the force in trying to uh, uh, trying to destroy the uh, the thing. Brilliant movie, so suspenseful. Um, really, really love Alien, the original. Um, the sequel, Aliens, obviously it was taken on by James Cameron. It went in a much more action-oriented direction, away from the sort of sci-fi horror. Um, it still had elements of horror, but it was more like sci-fi action with you know dotted in with bits of horror. Um, Aliens, a very cool movie, really enjoy it. Alien 3, uh, <laughs> not very good, but if you watch the um, the special edition cut that's on this, much better movie than the uh, theatrical version, and Alien Resurrection's just rubbish. I love that set. Next up, we have uh, Alien vs. Predator box set. So this has got the original Alien vs. Predator. And uh, Alien vs. Aliens vs. Predator 2 Requiem. Uh, so yeah, I always remember seeing posters for this um, in the cinema. I mean, I was very young when it came out. Um, I mean, what would it have been like 2004 or something, 2005? So I always used to see the posters for these movies when I went to the cinema. And uh, yeah, I was always fascinated, especially by the Alien. I always thought the alien looked very cool. Um, obviously, I'm, you know, I still do, and I love the Predator as well. Um, I haven't seen the second one yet, to be honest. The first one's a bit gash, but you know, whatever. Picked that up because it was cheap, and uh, you know, I wanted to add to, you know, flesh out the the collection of the uh, the Alien and Predator movies. I mean, you know, I, I don't the the one that I'm short on is Prometheus, and there's a couple of Predator movies that I need to get, I think. Um, but yeah, that's. Um, that's that. That's the the Alien versus Predator movies. Um, are, you know the, the the first ones. That I, I will watch the second one eventually when I you know get around to it. But, but anyway, let's move on. So this is American, the Bill Hicks story. Bill Hicks, I think, is is the best comedian of all time. Um, he's my favourite stand-up. Um, so this is a documentary about the man himself. Uh, two discs. I haven't even looked at the bonus features on the second disc. I've just watched the documentary and I've flicked through this rather nice um, booklet on uh, the making of and all that sort of thing. Very interesting documentary. It's like part animation, like they've taken, and it's full of early video of him. Great stuff, showing that he was talented from the, the day he started. He was he was just amazing, hilarious man, one of the funniest men who ever lived. Um, uh, very much an icon of my, uh, you know, a hero of mine actually. I'd say Bill Hicks. I really, really love him. Um, so what's on the bonus features? Uh, yeah, unseen footage from Bill's career, extended interviews, his personal audio journals, which they do clip in in the movie, which is very interesting to hear. Um, you know, when he's just talking on his own, you know, so this is getting towards the point where he was dying and he was sort of doing it for an outlet, which is. You know, it's very, very interesting, very moving uh, film, actually, the documentary itself, I've got to say, and some extra um, uh, animations and stuff. Because, like I say, a lot of it's animated. Um, you know, they kind of um, tell the story, like weave the stories together through animations and stuff. It's very interestingly made documentary. Um, even if you're not really a fan of Bill Hicks, I would recommend this. If you're interested in documentary filmmaking, it is a very good example of the of the genre um so yeah that's that's uh, american the bill hicks story um I, I yeah can't recommend that enough actually all right next up we have american psycho um yeah this is uh yeah the famous movie of christian bale playing uh patrick bateman is that his name um yeah i think so but yeah um 
Yeah, he, he basically uh, is is a stockbroker who, um, you know, is 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 a stockbroker by day and a you know serial killer by night. Um, very suspenseful movie. Um, I, I I really enjoy it actually. It's it's definitely a fun movie. Um, a really uh, you know well, well put together movie. Obviously, this is a very famous movie. There's there's a bunch of bonus features. You know, there's um, some interviews and trailers and uh, deleted scenes and stuff. Um, I won't go on about this one too long because, um, yeah, I mean, I think most people have, have know about American Psycho and know that it's a, you know, a pretty, uh, it's, it's a very well-known film, as I say. It's definitely worth seeing, I think. What's not so worth seeing <laughs> is American Psycho 2. This is a fucking awful film. Um, so, yeah, this is about Mila Kunis, who plays uh, one of the survivors from the first film, who goes on her own rampage um this appears to be yeah it's got a sticker on the back from when whoever bought it from blockbuster video when it first came out um so i mean judging from the fact that it's the old bbfc uh, c- certificate on the front and the price i'm guessing this would have been early 2000s like 2001 or maybe even 2000 that this was bought and it was bought for 14.99 and I cannot imagine being the person who paid that money for this film. I mean, I bought it for about 50p. And even that's, you know, pushing it. American Psycho 2 is fucking dreadful. Um, I, I definitely think this is really just for people who are really curious about how not to make a sequel. This is pretty much the answer. Um, yeah, if someone said to me, you know, defi- define a terrible sequel. American Psycho 2 is it. A, you know, a real cash in on... An artistically interesting movie with a film that is not at all and should just not have ever been made. Um, I believe this was actually made separately to American Psycho, and then when American Psycho became massively successful, they bought the license to the sequel and then uh, made this um, and kind of incorporated in some new footage and stuff to try and make it a sequel to American Psycho. But yeah, it's crap. Don't worry. Okay, next up we have a box set of uh, the Amityville Horror. This is the original movie from the uh, 70s, 77 or something, and the remake. Uh, so this is the original. Um, yeah, good fun ghost movie. A couple who move into a new home and um, just weird shit starts happening. Um, crazy, crazy ghost movie. Um, I would really recommend, uh, actually, the Amityville Horror. It's a pretty good example of its genre, I've got to say. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, so that's the original. Um, so I haven't actually seen the remake yet. I, I, I probably should. I mean, overall, I've not got a, I've not got a particular fondness for remakes, but um, you know, I mean, who has really? But I mean, I do quite enjoy. It's a little bit camp, but I do enjoy the original Amityville Horror for what it is. Um, and I mean, I'm not a massive fan of like ghost, you know, you know, poltergeist type movies. I'm not overly keen on that. But you know, whatever. It's definitely a good example of the genre for what it is. Uh, from 88 Films, the cult cinema collection. This is Anthropophagus. So this is the first time that this movie has ever been released uncut on disc in the UK. Um, the last disc that was brought out before this was missing nine minutes, I believe. Which is mental, a mental amount of the film to be cut, actually, because um, that would be, I, I've sort of, you know, I semi-counted, and I think that would be, like, all of the the gore scenes and all of the, the juicy stuff gone, um, which is which is amazing, really. Um, so, yeah, Anthropophagus, um, obviously, it was a video nasty in the UK. It's quite a notorious film. Um, directed by Joe D'Amato, stars George Eastman as a sailor, who, um, after his family die, goes a bit cuckoo and starts, for some reason, just rotting. And, um, yeah, uh, he ends up killing and eating pretty much the entire population of this island. And when these tourists arrive at the island, um, they're confused about the fact that there's so few people. Um, and, yeah, eventually end up, you know, getting picked off by, um, yeah, George Eastman in, uh, he, in a great makeup job <laughs> to, to uh, munching his way through them. Um, it's not the best movie I've ever seen. It's definitely fun, though. I would recommend it. It's got a good atmosphere. 
Um, and if you're into gore, then then uh, you know the, the the gore is quite occasional, but it is very strong when it when it's there. Um, I mean, I won't go into specifics, but it is it really. I guess it's a classic of Italian bad taste horror. Um, you know, it is a, it is it is you know superb in 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 its way. I mean, um, in terms of bonus features, um, it's got a documentary, a really interesting documentary called Forty Second Street Memories. Um, all about the grindhouse theatres on 42nd Street in New York City. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. It's got a bunch. It's got um, three different trailers for the movie, all under different titles. This this film was released under so many titles, it's unbelievable. Um, so it was released as. It's got trailers for it under the titles Anthropophagus, Savage Island, and The Grim Reaper, which are just three of the titles that this film's known by. I know there's definitely two or three more that I've heard it called by. Um, some of them combinations of other of, of other names. Some places it's Anthropophagus the Beast. Other places it's Anthropophagus the Grim Reaper. I believe it was actually released as Zombie Seven um, for a short while in America, which is mad because it's not a zombie movie at all. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely a bit slow the film, but I would recommend it for you know people who want to see something that is just very very trashy. And uh, you know, very intense. Um, you know, good mood, good atmosphere. Uh, as I say, George, George Eastman's great in it. So that's Anthropophagus. Okay, so from uh, one uh, intense and controversial movie to another, this is uh, Antichrist by Lars von Trier, um, the filmmaker best known. Well, not best known, but he's known for the Dogma '95 movement, which was kind of about taking control away from studios and giving it back to directors. It's basically a list of rules that directors had to follow to have their films classified as um, Dogma 95 films. And, and there's kind of a, I guess, like it's it's all about sort of artistic integrity and stuff. But this is about a couple whose uh, son dies, he falls from a window while he's not being watched. Um, and uh, the, the guy's a therapist, the woman's an academic of some description. Uh, they go out into a, 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 f a forest um, so that he can try and help her recover from her grief. Um, and just crazy shit starts happening between them. Um, very, very bloody, um, intense. Um, there's a lot... <laughs> The big thing, but there's a lot of genital mutilation in this movie. I'll just get it out of the way now. That's the big thing with this movie. Um, it's definitely an interesting movie. I wouldn't go so far as to say I like it, though. Um, but I do think that, um, you know, the acting in it is great. The, the special effects are great. I just can't really get on board with the story. It's very hard to follow. I guess you kind of got... To, it's one of those movies you've got to get in the right place for, and I just haven't found that place yet. Um... But yeah, that's that's Antichrist. It's um, you know, in terms of extras, it's got interviews with the cast and a commentary trailer, um, a bunch of featurettes about the stuff in the movie. Um, yeah, no, uh, yeah, this is a, a, a very divisive movie, as I say. Um, a lot of people love it. A lot of people hate it. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. It's it's definitely an interesting uh, picture, but. You know, it's, it's it's what it is. I, I can't, I can't. It's one of those movies you've really got to see it for yourself, and it is not for everyone. There's, there's no. I wouldn't. I would not recommend watching that movie for anyone who is not well versed in um, strong gore, because it is incre The gore is incredibly strong. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> that's Antichrist. Next movie on the list, Apocalypse of the Dead. This is a zombie movie. Um, uh, it's uh, a Serbian film, I believe, and it has been released also under the title Zone of the Dead, which I believe is the original title. This is a retitling for the UK by Into Film, who do a lot of that sort of thing in my experience. Um, yeah, so it's basically a movie in which a group of um, uh, sort of Interpol members led by uh, Ken Foray uh, of Dawn of the Dead fame, who um, they're basically transporting some a dangerous prisoner, um, and in the middle of them doing this, a zombie outbreak happens. So they've sort of got to team up with the prisoner and try to um, uh, escape. I watched this quite recently. Um, there are some good things about it. There's some horrible things about it. Um, 
first of all, the story is very crap. Um, uh, the acting is relatively good, though. I mean, that's what you get with Ken Foray. He is a fantastic actor. He's one of my favourite actors of all time. He's brilliant. Um, but, you know, that, that, that that's kind of the thing you get with, with this movie is that, you know, he's a great actor, but it's very... It's kind of cringeworthy to watch him trying to sell really bad dialogue. That's the big problem. Um, so, yeah, Apocalypse of the Dead, nothing really in the way of bonus features particularly. Um, I've got to say, one thing I did enjoy about the movie, the zombie action was very good in this film. I've got, I've got, a, I've got to commend them for that. They did put together a good set piece, um, and there was some very good fun splattering in it. So, um, I mean, if you're a really really rabid zombie fan you've probably already seen this but definitely do check it out with with reservations i'm not you know i'm not gonna go all out and recommend it if someone wanted to you know i've already spoken about a much better zombie movie in this in this video you know 28 days later go and watch 28 days later if you want to see a modern zombie movie though i say modern it's like 15 years old now but a 21st century zombie movie done very well 28 days later is the benchmark and we end with a movie I hate. This is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Um, I've, I've got to say, um, it's it's a it's a, it's a video nasty. I bought it because it's a video nasty. I found it incredibly cheap online, so I thought I'd order it, watch it. Um, I could I could go on for hours about the stuff I hate about this film. It's called Axe. Um, it's also known as um, Little Lisa, Lisa Lisa, um, The Virgin Slaughter. California Axe Massacre, classic case of Grindhouse retitling. Um, so basically what happens in this movie is um, a group of criminals uh, do a thrill kill. Um, well, it's, it's, uh, I, you know, there's never any reason provided for it. It's never sort of as explicitly said that it's a thrill kill. They go and hole up in the sticks. They find this uh, old farmhouse um, with a young girl there, uh, Lisa. And her granddad, um, and they're just very weird, to say the least. Um, it's kind of a mix of Last House on the Left, uh, Texas Chainsaw, those sorts of movies. Um, one of them tries to have his way with her, and she takes revenge, and all that sort of thing. Um, crap movie, um, incredibly slow, incredibly boring, incredibly badly made. Um, absolutely laughable acting and dialogue, laughable writing. Um, well, I say laughable, it's not even funny. This is a terrible movie. Um, the only reason I've still got it is because I want to try and get all 72 video nasties. Um, this is just absolute dog shit of a movie, though. I cannot tell you enough to avoid Axe. It is awful. Okay, um, so that wraps it up for this edition of looking at my DVD collection. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more of these. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, actually. Um, so yeah, uh, that's gotten you know a, a, a little bit of it done. There's going to be um, you know it's going to go well into double figures, well into double figures. This. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, well, that's actually all the movies that started a done is what that is. Um, but yeah, come back next time for more if you've enjoyed this. Leave me a comment with uh, you know what you think of the movies I've shown. Um, I'll probably, if I can be bothered, I'll leave a list in the description along with a link to my podcast, which you should check out. But yeah, so that's part one of my DVD collection. Uh, check back next time if you want to see more. Laters, folks.